Good morning, everyone. This is Jennifer, and I'm here to show you how to make a really cute card. I had sent this birthday card to Sylvia, and a couple of you had commented, and I don't have one already made, so I'm going to have to actually make it with you. If you missed the live, you can always go back and watch the replay. I've got everything ready. So first, I'm going to start with telling you that for this card, I used the So Much Happy paper collection, and this was available in the last catalog. It's not available anymore, although you might still be able to get the paper pack on my website in the Going Soon section. So you go to my website, you click Shop at the top, drop that down, go to the bottom. It's like third or fourth from the bottom, I believe, and it says Going Soon. Click that, and you'll be able to find all the paper packs that are available. Okay, I also use lemon and sapphire inks for this project. Lemon is retiring, sapphire is not. Um, this is a really great vibrant yellow. The yellow they're replacing it with is called lemonade. So I'm not sure if it's going to be the, on the same um, tones with this one or the same colors, but they are replacing this one with something called lemonade. But this is what I used for today. Oh, I forgot to turn my volume down let me turn that down real quick sorry you guys sorry 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 and get back over here all right so here we go the stamp sets that i used or will be using or whatever are so many candles workshop your way this came in a workshop your way kit it's b1669 i can't remember which one this came with i thought it may be the true love paper pack True love card making? I can't remember. But I'll look and I'll post it in the comments when I'm done. And then this one is Party Balloons. This was available in the last catalog. And I believe you might still be able to get the stamp set. But I used the stars from this. But we have other stamp sets with small little stars. Okay, so these are the stamp sets that I used. So I'm going to put these over here so they're not in my way. And we're going to get started. So what you're going to need is, for the base of your card, you're going to need a four and a quarter by four and a quarter piece of cardstock. And our cardstock is double-sided. So if I pick up this one, I can show you. Oops, I think it's this way. It is this way. See how you get two colors? I love that about our cardstock. Okay, so make sure that you decide which color you want and have that facing up for the front of your card. This is just going to show a small border. The majority of the color will be on the back. Okay, so this is the base, and again, that's four and a quarter by four and a quarter, and that needs to be cut from cardstock. Then you're going to, for your background, you need pattern paper, and this needs to be cut at four by 12. All right. And we're going to score this at on the 12 inch side at four inches on this side, flip it around and score it again at four. That's the easiest way for beginner scorers to, to learn how to score. You know, I could say score at four and score at eight. You know, you could do that too. But either way, I'm gonna score that with you. So for the front of your card, for the front panel, you need a piece of cardstock that is three and a half by three and a half. That's the base layer for your mat. For your top, you're going to need a three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And this is the piece that you will stamp on. So I make mine white. Okay. Then you're going to need for the inside, there's a little pocket and you get to pull a card out of there. And for this one, you're going to need the mat is going to be three and a half by three and a half cut by cardstock. And then the top layer for this one is the same size as the front. They're the same size. It's three and a quarter by three and a quarter, and you're going to stamp on this one. So make sure that you remember that you're going to have to stamp on that and that your recipient can see it. Okay? So I'm going to set those aside, and we're going to work with this one right now. So for this one, I'm going to grab my scoreboard. And I'm going to put this in on the long side, the 12-inch side. And 
find my bone folder. There it is. And I'm going to score at four. Okay. Now you can go over and score at eight. I'm just going to turn it around and score at four. And that's it. That's all the scoring you need to do. You can also do that with a ruler if you don't have a scoreboard. And to do that, you would measure in four, put your ruler there, line it up, and just run this down your paper. Okay? You just need something to show you where to fold. So that's another way that you can do it if you don't have a scoreboard. So now I'm going to, and I've got to, it's been a little bit since I made that card. So you're going to have to remember which way. I'm just going to fold them this way for now. And I always make sure when I fold them that it's lined up here and here and straight. Even though I've already scored it, sometimes our scores can be a little bit off. So, let me see. I want to, which one do I want to make my front? I'm going to make this my front. So, if whatever, well, I think. I need to go this way. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yep, it's going to be this way. So, if this is going to be the top of your card, what's facing out, I'm getting ink all over me. I'm going to turn this over because we're going to work on the back side of it. You're going to take this corner and fold it down to where we made that score line, we're going to fold it down and meet up. We're not going to go over the score line. You never want to go over your scores because then your card just won't, it won't flow and it won't fold and it won't open. Now, I always check to make sure that I get this edge lined up. And if it's not, I go in and manipulate it until it is. And if that messes up my score line, then it'll straighten out when I fold it, but hopefully it won't. And then I'm going to use my bone folder and give that a really nice crisp edge. I think I did that right. We'll find out. And I'm going to do this one in the opposite direction, but the same technique. I'm going to fold it over to the um, score line. I'm going to line my edge up. To make sure it's straight. And then I'm going to use my bone folder. I might have it upside down. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, no, I don't. Okay. So then after you've folded those, and again, you can go the opposite way. Okay, I'll show you what that looks like too. You flip it back over. And this is now going to be your inside pocket. And this is going to be the front of your card. So it makes a square card that is four by four. Okay, this is on your top panel. And that would be your inside. So if you wanted to do it the other way, you just turn it around, fold these over the other direction, and your card would have that for the front. Okay, so decide however you want and do it that way and I'm going to do mine this way so how we did that was because <laughs> I know I probably messed you up how we did that and I'm not seeing um, if anybody is commenting or anything and I apologize uh, Facebook isn't showing me again so good morning if you're if you're here um, so again, this is 4 by 12. We scored at 4 and at 8, or 4, flipped it around, scored at 4 on the long side. All right. So then we flipped it over because this is going to be the back of my card. So I brought the left-hand top corner down to meet my score line, and I lined it up on the edge. And then I burnished it with my bone folder, okay? Then we went to this side and did the opposite. We took the bottom right-hand corner. We folded it up to the score line, straightened out, made sure this edge was straight, and we burnished it. And it looks like that. This is the back. 
So we flip it over, okay, turn it around so that now it looks like this. And this is going to be our inside pocket, okay, and this is going to be the front panel. Now, to glue your pocket, let me get my adhesive out here. I, uh, I'm going to use wet glue. You don't want to use a tape runner or a dry adhesive or a wet. A tape runner is considered a wet adhesive. They don't dry permanently. I think there might be one on the market that does, but we don't sell it. Um, and I've never used it, so I can't verify for that. Anytime I make a pocket, I use wet glue. Okay. And all you're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're just going to put glue on the edge of the flap. See, we're going to fold it over, line it up, make sure it's straight, and use our fingers and press. All right. I always put a little bit of glue, not much, just a little bit to hold this down because I don't need that to open. Okay, so now when we put this in, see, it fits in here. That's going to be the inside pullout card. All right, so then on the front, I always glue this down as well because I don't want it flopping open. All right, so there's. The front of our card so now what we're going to do is take our base oh now i can see you guys i don't know what happened i really don't so good morning everyone thank you for being here so now we're going to take our base which is four and a quarter by four and a quarter cut out of cardstock and remember you want to decide which color you want facing up i want the dark side so now i'm going to center this on that my edges i inked by this isn't what I use, but I use Sapphire. I just opened it and dragged my paper, flipped it, drag it, flipped it, drag it. That's how I ink the edges of straight lines. It's quick to me, and I don't have to drag anything else out. So for this one, I'm going to use wet glue just because I like to. And I'm just going to put glue along the edges and a little in the middle. All right, and you're going to line this up as best you can. I eyeball it. Um... That's just me. That's a, I'm an eyeballer. All right. So then I, the wet glue also allows me to move it around a little bit in case I am off. And I'm just going to use my bone folder to make sure that the glue is spread out. And if a little bit seeps out, I just wipe it up because it dries clear. Dries clear. Okay. So now there's the base. Of our card okay so now let's work on the inside card that goes in here so for that again you need your mat needs to be three and a half by three and a half and it needs to be cut from cardstock I used the sapphire and I think uh, I think I'm gonna stick with the dark side because I really lo I love sapphire so then your inside pull out mat needs to be three and a quarter by three and a quarter and this is the piece that you're going to stomp stamp on i've already done that so this is going to adhere to this okay and again i use wet glue you guys can use tape tape runners are great but the white daisy is a little thicker and since i'm gluing cardstock to cardstock i like to use glue and i'm going to eyeball it Get it centered as best I can. Turn it over. I don't want to put any marks. Now, for this, if you want, you can use a white jelly roll pen to write a sentiment back here. Or you could put another piece of paper. I would not use cardstock. I would use copy paper or um, some kind of thin paper. Write your message on it and then glue it to this. And that's where they get their their message okay so that goes in there isn't that cute already look at that and what i did to this was i stamped the sentiment with the stamp set 
Age is strictly a case of mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. So, and Gisela had posted something like that about mind over matter. And anyway, it was funny. I did that. So then I took these little heart marks and these little stars from Party Balloons. And I did lemon and sapphire. The stars were done in lemon and the little hearts were done in sapphire. So that's how I did that. Okay. So next, let's work on our front. So for the front, you need a base that's three and a half by three and a half. I'm going to use the dark and see it's going to center on here. Okay. So see that nice little border you have left around it. That's why you need to decide which design you want up and just play with it, you know. So then your top front layer needs to be three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And this is a piece you're going to stamp on. And I'm going to flip this over. And this is how I did the front. So now I am going to adhere these together. Adhere these together. See, this card's really quick. It really, the longest part of it is the stamping and trying to decide how you want to decorate it. For me, I'll go in with a plan sometimes. Sometimes I don't. I just start messing. And it's like, okay, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? So I just start stamping. That's what I do. And I usually start on scratch paper. And then I grab colors that I like or that I think would look good together and just start stamping until a project comes to mind. And it's great to have an art journal to do that because then you could save those pages and make something out of them. Okay, so now there's the front that I'm going to adhere on here. Now, let me get that stuck in there. So we need to center this up, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I am going to see this corner. I've got it lined up with that and that corner is lined up with that. That's how you get that centered. Make sure I've got it lined up. Okay, that's how you get it centered. You just line this corner up with this um, miter. We'll call it a miter. And then this corner up with this one. And then that's how you get it centered. That also shows you where you need to put your adhesive. Because we don't want to put it down here or our card won't open. So we're going to work in this upper right hand, or upper left hand corner. And I'm going to flip it. And I'm not going to go quite to... I'm not going to go quite to this edge because I don't want it to seep out. All right. So again, I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to line that one up and that one up. And because I'm using wet glue, it gives me a little bit of time to work with it. And I'm going to press that down. Okay. Look at that cute little card. Isn't that cute? And then you open it. Now, if you want to, you can put another piece in here, but I don't mind this. I've got a little bit of glue right there. I don't mind this at all, but I think on Sylvia's, I may have added a panel to that. I can't remember. And then this is going to be the inside of their card. You could put a lottery ticket in here. You could put money in there, you know, all kinds of things. One more little thing I want to do to dress this up is I want to add some sparkles, but I want to show you what you can do with our sparkles. Some of you know, some of you don't know. So our markers are alcohol ink. Okay, alcohol ink is permanent, you guys. So did you know, and bear with me, I'm going to zoom in. I might have to readjust my lighting. I use this to practice on. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the yellow and I'm going to color the spark sparkle. Okay, see that? See how that one's yellow? And that's permanent. You can color your sparkles to be any color that you want to go with your project. I want to do a blue one too. So I'm going to Make sure I do that. And see, here's how they start out. And this was after I colored with a yellow and a blue. Isn't that cool? I think that is so cool. So now I'm going to another little tip. Our 
no stick micro tip scissors are no stick. So to pick these up, you just kind of slide it under there. Oops, sometimes I gotta still use my finger. But see, it's on the scissors, and I can transfer it to my card. I'm gonna stick one there, and I'm gonna get this one off, and I'm gonna stick it up here. And there's my card. I'm gonna zoom back out. So you can see the whole thing. There you go. So now you can see that there's my card. And there's the open it. We made the inside. And that goes in here. You close it and there's the back. So I hope you guys will try it. I hope you liked it. It is, like I said, a fun, quick, really kind of cool um, fold card. And the recipients are always, that is so cool. You just know how to do everything with paper. Well, yeah, I do. Well, not everything, but I love to learn. I still learn every day, you guys. And I learn from you, too. So, but I hope you guys liked it. And I hope you'll try it. And if you do, please post a photo of it. Remember, if you post photos of cards that you make, I require that you use at least 90% close to my art product, which means mostly your paper, your card stock, and your stamps. I realize that you can't get everything right away and you don't have everything, um, but I do require, you know, when you post something that it's our card stock, our patterned paper, and our stamps. You can use whatever ink you want, whatever glue you want, whatever embellishments you want, but that's it. That's all I require. And most of you, most of you already know that. All right, I got more videos planned. Some of them will be lives. Some of them will be uploads. So I will tag you if you would like to be tagged. I had several ask that I tagged them. And then I tagged a few more who said they hadn't been able to get notifications. So is that black pen still available? Hi, Sylvia. Which black pen, babe? These are Shinhan markers. We sell these individually or in a set. And these are going away. These are retiring. We're replacing them. And I'm not real crazy about that, but we're going to make it work, right? I'm not going to stop using these because a lot of you have bought these. And I still want to show you tricks with these. I don't want to stop that. So this one is marine blue, and it is number B62. And the yellow that I used is golden yellow, and it's Y222. And if you go on my website, let's see if that'll focus. Will it? It won't. But if you go on my website, you'll be able to see the markers. And if you need any help, you can always message me. And I can give you, um, you know, the links and stuff. The shin pen. Yes, these are blue and yellow. And then for this little black line on the balloons, because it's, this is stamps one color, I just took a black permanent marker. Just a, a Sharpie fine tip, and that's what I used here. So that's it. All right, you guys. Ooh, I hope you all have a good weekend. Thank you for being here. And like I said, I will be back with more videos. Mwah! I love you. Bye.